It's another edition of the UCPA Women's Basketball Show. My name's Jonah Goldberg, and this is Hannah Burleson, assistant coach of the UTPA Bronx, making her return to the coach's show. She was she pitch hit a couple times last year, back in the hot mm -hmm. seat today. So since you're now in charge of the show, mm -hmm. I gotta ask you, what are you gonna do with your team now? It's your team, right? Because you're you're on the show. I, I think it's still Coach Tidwell's, but I, I think we, we can all agree that we're gonna win. That's that's the goal <laughs> there. So Well, since the last time we spoke to you, the Brox have had easily their lightest schedule of the year. Instead of playing 12 times over the course of a week, the Brogs have played once, uh, taking a little time off for finals, which I'm sure was great, and then going to Texas Tech and playing the Red Raiders tough in a 50-42 loss. And, you know, I know it's a loss, but when you see that kind of result with Texas Tech, and really eight points doesn't show how close it was because they hit their free throws at the end. It, this game was tied, I think, four times. The mm -hmm. lead changed a few times. It was such a tight game throughout. Yeah, it really was, and and we led majority majority of the of the ball game. But you know, it's 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 good that we stayed with you know a Big 12 team to this. But like you said, it was a lot closer than than what the score really shows. It went it went back and forth quite a bit, and we played some really good defense. It was fairly low scoring uh, across the board, but we we did step up and play good defense. We rebounded a lot better than we than we have been. So that's something we've really improved in. I think we're out rebounded by four. Um, Brittany Bush and Teandre and Nolan both had eight apiece, and then Raquel came in and pulled down seven. So if we can get them to continue to get those kind of numbers, we'll definitely um, win some some big games in the WAC. And you know, Troy Swain came in off the bench and, and put up ten points. So it's good to have a freshman come in off the bench and put up double figures for us. And I mean, there were there were some positives, although we we didn't really take care of the ball like we liked to, and we didn't necessarily take care of business at the free throw line like we should have. But there were, there were quite a few positives, and I think it was good for our girls to see that we can play with, with big-time teams. Yeah, you mentioned Swain, and there's a, a player who you only went down eight twice in the game at the end, and then at one point with about, I think, about six, five minutes left, and then Swain just steps up, hits the three, hits the layup, and makes a one-possession game again. Right, and that, that's kind of the, that's what we're really expecting from her. You know, she, she's gotten some games, some experience under her belt now, and going into whack play, it's, it's good to see that she's, she's coming around and putting up these numbers that, that we're kind of expecting from her. So, so yeah, Swain leading the Bronx at 10 points. It was a career high for her. You, know, you mentioned uh, Chandra and Nolan, and uh, it, I mean, the eight rebounds, that's, that's a great total for a guard, especially against a really big Texas Tech team. Right, and she's, she's a point guard, but Chandra does a great job of, of leading our team as a whole. And she does a great job on the backside, making sure she always comes up with the board, and she'll she'll really put a body on someone. So it, it is a, it's that's a really good number for a point guard to have um, from the bo from the board standpoint. Yeah, and the inside, I mean, between Bush and you know, Hilda Bjork, Karchins, our Laura Van Tilburg, it seemed like although they didn't necessarily have huge numbers. I mean, you know, in a 50-42 game, you don't expect anybody to have huge numbers. Uh, they came up with big baskets at big times. Karchins, Otter, and Bush. Scored the first two baskets. You were up five nothing. You know, Van Tilburg tied the game on two mm -hmm. different occasions. Just a great play on the inside. Yeah, and and Brittany got in some foul trouble early, and it kind of inhibited her. But for to still be able to pull down eight rebounds, she was definitely doing what she needed to do as far as controlling the glass. And Hilder has continued to improve. She's really adjusting to the game, and and each game there's some improvement for her as far as you know playing a faster pace than maybe what she's used to. And for Laura to come in and and put up four points, like you said, a big four points at the right time. For a freshman, you know that was that was good for her too. We like we like to see those sparks come off the bench and take care of what they need to take care of. Yeah, she tied the game at 18. She tied the game at 27. Uh, but well, you know, we you also touched on the defense. I think that's something that uh, you know deserves a lot of attention. You, know, you held Tech to 34% shooting, uh, but you go beyond that. How about 0 of 14 from behind the arc for what was supposed to be a really good three-point shooting team? Right, and we, we knew, you know, going into the game that that's something we had to focus on, making sure we kept them in front of us and, you know, playing our game, our defense. You know, generally speaking, we're a fairly decent, pretty good defensive team, and that's something we knew that if we wanted to stay in the ball game, we had to make sure that we took care of, took care of it on defense. And, and our guards did a really good job of pressuring them so that they weren't able to put up easy, uh, easy shots. And... We got through screens like we were supposed to, our post hedge as well. So we really did a good job defending in the perimeter. And um, Texas Tech has a very agile post, and we did a good job of defending her, aside from Brittany picking up some fouls. But for the most part, did a really good job of defending them. And, you know, they have a 
pretty pretty good guard out there. But uh, last year, you know, she had a double double on us, and we were able to keep her within, keep her under that this year. So I think we did a much better job of defending. But you know, you look back and we've played people like Baylor and Texas and DePaul, Texas A&M, and you know, going into Texas Tech, we've we've played this caliber before. So we really. I think the girls knew what it took getting into this game to, to really stay in stay in it. And, and I think they've, they've learned from the other losses that we had prior to this against Big 12 teams and big time teams. So I think, I think they did a really good job, like you said, of defending and keeping, keeping them from knocking down their three. And you know, throughout the season, I know it's 0-5 you know, against those you know, su super teams, you can almost call them for them ranked. But uh, you know, DePaul, you were with throughout the mm -hmm. entire first half. a and uh, a two-point game almost beat them. Uh, Texas, if you take out the first five minutes, the last five mm -hmm. minutes, you played even with them. Uh, you know, Baylor got away. The first few minutes were close, but it got away a little. But then, you know, uh, you come back and you do the, what you did with Tech. And the, the, to me, that shows a team that's right on the cusp of uh, being right, so good. And uh, that's that's really good when you're entering conference play. Right, and that, that's right. What we're, that's what we're working for. And I think you know, like you said, we we've stuck with majority of these teams, but I really don't think we've peaked as a team yet. And and I'm okay with that. I know we as a coaching staff are okay with that. You know, going right into conference, like I, I like you said, it's right where we need to be to to take care of whack play. I think the last thing you want to do is peak and then have two and a half weeks exactly. off. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we. We'll have you know some time off. It gives the girls some time to go home, spend time with their family, come back rejuvenated and, and ready to take care of business. And like we, we talked about before the show, you know they we've had a little bit of time off. We play uh, on Thursday here against Incarnate Word, and then we'll travel to Virginia and play against VCU. And then the girls will be off until the 29th, so they'll get about a week off. And then we have eight days before we have another game in New Jersey, so they'll be well rested and and should be ready to take on conference. Now you were a student athlete not that long ago. You may remember that last year you were the youngest full-time uh, assistant coach in uh, NCAA Division I women's basketball. Uh, so for you, when finals are over, do you, what was it like when you suddenly it's just about the games and it, you don't have to worry about, uh, about classes and about the finals that are breathing down your neck knowing that, oh my God, it's really the mm -hmm. most important time of the year and now it's, it's over. It's it is such a relief, <laughs> such a relief, and I, I think our girls did did well academically this year, and they they busted their butt the whole the whole semester to make sure we took care of take took care of things in the classroom. So now the finals are over, they really can get some extra time in the gym, put up shots, uh, some of them rest. We've had a rough a rough uh, travel <laughs> this preseason, so get some rest and and catch up catch up in the gym and spend some time at the free throw line probably. So what do you do? You like shoot a thousand free throws in a row because you have all day to do it, or? I mean, I'm not opposed to them doing that <laughs> by any means. I'd rather them make them, but I'm not opposed to them getting up a thousand free throws, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> are, you're, are you going to be counting? Um, depends. Maybe it, I might. Yeah. Depends. <laughs> so now that you've gotten uh, the finals out of the way, you come back from Texas Tech. You come back home where you, you play really well this year. You've had a lot of games at home as well. Uh, I think five and one at home is the record now, mm -hmm. and uh, Incarnate Word comes up on Thursday. Uh, what do you know about them so far? Uh, Incarnate Word, they're they're pretty good inside. They're gonna they're gonna take care of business. Uh, I think they'll probably run a little bit of zone against us, so we'll need to shoot better than we did against Texas Tech. But they're they're a skilled team. You know, they're moving up to Division One. This is their second year in Division One. They're in the Southland, and I mean they're they're an improving team, and that's that's what we are too. We're also improving. So I mean. We'll have to take care of business with them, just like just like we have to do with any game. We'll need to make sure we, you know, push the ball in transition, kind of stick to our style of play. But I, I think if if the girls come ready to play and take care of business, I think I, I'd like to see us chalk up another win. So. And then after that, you jump right on the road and go to Virginia Commonwealth. That's a team. Yeah, you played a really good game against last year. I think it was tied with about 10 mm -hmm. minutes left before VCU pulled away for a 10-point win. Yeah, and VCU, they're, they're always a tough program, and, and that'll be a tough um, tough road game, but kind of the same thing. I, I think for our, for our girls, for our team, um, every game is pretty much what we, what we bring to the table and what, what we come to do. You know, they, everyone plays for 40 minutes. They tip the ball for a reason. So I think, uh, I think VCU is it's definitely a game that we can win if we'll, if we'll go in there with the right mindset, the right attitude, and, and give it our all for the 40 minutes. Now here's what I wonder. When the VCU game is over and you have two and a half weeks to your next game, 
When do you start scouting NJIT? Um, that's probably already began. It's not my scout, but I'm pretty sure it's already <laughs> began. They've, they've been looking at stats all year long. We try to keep up with everybody that's on our schedule and what's going on. So we've, uh, they've started that, but as far as for the girls, we'll probably start that the 29th, the day that they get back. So it's, it's a process. We want every win we can get. So the day after the VCU game, when you have a couple days off, you're not going to just sleep the day away and you know take a breather right back to it? Um, I, I would say so. Mo that's pretty much what we'll do. The coaches will stay in contact the whole time over the break, this and that. So I'd, I'd say, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure we're prepared on our end so that the girls can pre prepare, be prepared on theirs. Man, no rest for the weary. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, how, it's what it takes to win. You know, we talked about the student athletes getting some time off. The coaches deserve, how about this, take 10 minutes? I can, we can take, we get a flight. That, that counts okay, or something. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Sleep on the plane. Uh -huh. Well, part of the plane. You know, you, you can look at video on the mm -hmm. plane. <laughs> well, the Bronx are back home on Thursday. They take on Incarnate Word 7 p.m. at the UTPA Fieldhouse. Doors open at 6, and then they're on the road at VCU. I believe that's at uh, noon time Eastern, and we'll have links to everything to follow the games up at UTPA Bronx. Um, we'll take a couple of weeks off for winter break from the show, but uh, just as they start to get back to games, we'll start in getting back with the show. So make sure you check us back here at utpabronx.com. But until then, go Bronx!